Hi everyone, welcome to the first introductory episode of the Tiny Dogs Talk podcast series, Pediatric Interview Edition. Today, we are going to help you while preparing for the clinical thinking station of pediatric training interviews in the UK. Tiny Dogs Talk is brought to you by the British Sudanese Association of Pediatric and Child Health, in short, BSAP-CH. I'm your host, my name is Isra Ibrahim, and I am a member of BSAP-CH. Today, we are diving deep into the clinical and critical thinking stations, uh, stations, an essential station of this interview for both ST1 and ST3 level. Joining me today are the brilliant minds of Jewaria Ibrahim and Hanan Aleb. Jewaria and Ibrahim, both of them prepare few episodes that will show you how to navigate through the complexities of this crucial station. In this introductory episode, I will take you on a short journey through the structured approach to the clinical thinking station. Please refer to Royal College of Pediatric and Child Health, RCBCH website for the further technical details and guideline about the clinical thinking station. We will, we, now we're going to explore each aspect of this station. So let's speak about the initial approach and assessment. So you are going to be given a clue or initial detail. Uh, the patient either the patient is coming uh, by ambulance or uh, the GB called and the patient is coming I refer to you by the GB and so on so you are giving a clue so what are you going to do so it is very important while you are thinking about what is the differential diagnosis in your head you need to think about preparing your uh, your staff you need to prepare your equipment as well so think about what flag what the flag um, stand for the weight, energy, tube, meaning ETT tube, fluids, lorazepam, adrenaline or epinephrine, and glucose. So you need to prepare that before the patient arrives. You need to go to your nurses and ask them to prepare that and help while preparing that. Then the patient will arrive. You need to do your initial assessment. It's very important. A, B, C, D, E assessment as needed. You need to think about escalation protocol as well. You need to think, oh, I need to escalate this to my registrar or consultant, demonstrating that you are a safe doctor. Ensure that the appropriate BBE is worn if needed, and if it is relevant, bring the guideline as well. For example, if the patient is coming in the DKA. So, then after the patient arrive, while you have about three differential diagnoses in your head, work through the clinical part of history, relevant history, relevant examination, relevant investigation, relevant management as needed. After that, this is not all. You need to think outside of the box. You need to think about escalation strategies, if not done so. You need to think about teamwork, leadership, distributing the rules. You need to think about the crucial aspect, um, um, about other crucial aspect of the effective patient management. You need to think about communication to the staff. You need to about the communication to the parents. It is very important to think about that. As you progress a near end assessment, um, uh, and if you have time, you need to think about ongoing management strategies. And this is, will include documentation, reflection, teaching about the topic, utilization of the guideline, if not done so, you need to think about where this patient will go. This patient will need admission. If you are in a district general hospital, do you need to, uh, to call the retrieval team to go, uh, for, uh, for, uh, to go to the tertiary center? You need to think about isolation protocol. Uh, it is very important. You need to think about follow-up as well. This is include letters to the GBs, the school, uh, how to manage sick days, and so on. So, dear listener, um, one uh, crucial aspect is you need to think about um, other causes as well. It's very important to think about clinical station and then accidental injury as one station. So if you have a non-accidental injury station, you need to think about the clinical aspect as well. And if you have a clinical uh, clinical scenario, you need to think about non-accidental injury as well. This is my last step. And now, dear listener, prepare to be entertained as we explore the pediatric training interviews clinical thinking station. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey ahead with Jueria and Hanan. Thank you. <laughs>